All right. Well, today um, we're going to talk a little bit about the triboelectric effect, um, which is really just a fancy word for something that we can see kind of in our everyday lives um, through static shock and a bunch of other things as well. Um, here are the objectives of this video. Um, there's quite a few, but we're going to burn through them real quick. So to describe the triboelectric effect well, I'm going to use a very simple example. I'm sure you guys have all experienced this in your lives, but we're going to have a guy here with some hair, right? And he's going to take a balloon and he's going to rub it all in his hair. And as we all know, as we've all done this in our lives, that if we rub the balloon in our hair um, and we place that balloon next to our hair, our hair will be attracted to the balloon. And that really is what the triboelectric effect is. And it can be seen in a variety of materials. This is probably the simplest way to see it, but it can be done with plastic and a glass rod or rubber and fur. But really we just see a transfer of charges. And charge really is um, the basis for this um, triboelectric effect, right? And it's been seen, uh, it can be seen in many situations, like I've already explained, like we have the, if you touch a doorknob, sometimes it will shock you. Lightning is another example of this, of something being built up and then just a sudden release of charge, right? Something we're all familiar with. We've grown up with terms um, such as positive and negative on these charges. So we're gonna have a negative charge and we're gonna have a positive charge. And that's really just an arbitrary name. Um, we could call it the blue charge and the red charge, but that's just something we've chosen to assign them in order to um, better understand them. And so as um, a common rule of thumb, positive charges or positive and negative charges when mixed together, they will attract towards each other. Right, so we have attraction there. And if we have two positive molecules, or if we have two negative molecules, we're going to see that they repel each other. And there's some math behind this for sure. Um, and distance has a lot to do with that. So let's take, for example, that we have, uh, let's say we have a negative charge, oops, negative charge and a negative charge, and we place a positive charge, let's say we place a positive charge one centimeter to the negative charge, and we'll place this one two centimeters. So the force between those charges is it's not a direct relationship to distance. Um, let's say that this creates a force of one. If that's the case, doubling the distance will cut that to down to one fourth. Since the force, um, the force will decrease uh, with the square of the distance. And so this brings us down to uh, something more basic. Let's go to the molecular level. At the molecular level, we assign uh, protons to be um, the, the positive charge. And we also have some, some neutrons in there, and then we'll have two electrons going on there. And this isn't drawn to scale by any means. Uh, the electron and the proton are not near to each other in size, but they are exactly the same magnitude of charge, which means that this little um, atom I drew over here will have a neutral overall charge. However, if we choose to get rid of one of these electrons, um, the protons outweigh the magnitude of the electron, and so we will have an overall charge that isn't neutral. It'll be positive in this case. And this helps to explain a lot what is going on in the hair and the balloon, because if we take the balloon and your hair, which are both naturally um, neutral objects, and we rub them together, the balloon will take electrons off from your hair. And that leaves behind a positive hair. 
And if we bring the balloon back, and since we were learning the rule that opposites attract, the positive charges and the negative charges want to correct, want, they will want to correct the balance, and so they will be attracted to each other. And then it makes more sense as we look at static shock from touching something that might be uh, negatively charged. And if we bring in close to contact, the electrons will jump over to our skin. And that's why we kind of feel the, the shock. So now if we attach some numbers um, to the proton, the electron, the basic unit for charge really, we represent it as E. And that'll be the charge of a proton. And since the electron is equal to the magnitude of the charge of the proton, <laughs> now if we go to larger scales, this is solely on the, uh, the molecular level, if we go to a larger scale, we'll run into coulombs. And coulombs are used um, to define larger charges than what we can see as an electron or a proton. And the Coulomb is named after a guy who was an 18th century French physicist. His name was Charles de Coulomb. And he came up with this basic number that one Coulomb is equal to about 6.24 times 10 to the 18, right? It could be protons or electrons, either one, it'll be about the same because they're equal in magnitude. Just the change in sign will indicate which is which. And if we try it the other way around and we just take the reciprocal and we have E equals about 1.60 times 10 to the negative 19th. And something important that I uh, forgot to mention earlier, but is, um, very pertinent to the triboelectric effect is the law of conservation. And this states that whenever a charge is created, an equal charge of the opposite sign is created at that same time. And so if we take um, this neutral object over here, like the balloon or a hair in the beginning, um, they both start out with a, def a definite number of charge on each side, whether it be positive or negative. However, when the balloon rubs against your hair, it attracts more of the electrons from your hair um, back onto the balloon. And so there really is no loss of charge. There's just a transfer of charges. And so there really is no charge being created. And that's just kind of what the law of conservation is trying to say. And I believe that's everything we're supposed to cover. And so I hope you enjoyed it and you learned a little bit about the uh, triboelectric effect.